This is short end of the year review C. Number one says find the measure of angle G. One thing that we should remember is no matter what your triangle looks like, at if it's a triangle, the sum of the interior angles, these three angles added up together, will equal 180 over time. So no matter what it looks like, it's going to equal 180 degrees. So I know that I have 155 showing a 135 and a 20. So all I need to do is take that 180 minus the 155 that I know we're showing to find out that there is a 25 degree angle that must be G. Now, might as well learn to um, classify those angles all, or those triangles also. It has a angle that's larger than 90, which is called an obtuse angle, so this that makes it automatically an obtuse triangle. It only takes one obtuse or one right angle to make it obtuse or right. And if none of the angles match, which they didn't, a 25 degree, a 20 degree, and a 135 degree, that means that none of the sides match, which makes it scalene. That's a scalene obtuse triangle. Number two says, what is the coefficient after simplifying? Remember, simplifying means getting all your like terms combined. So one thing I would start with is leave change opposite. There's an understood one right there in front of that parenthesis. Now I've done my leave change opposite. I'm going to do the distributive property to bust them out of jail. 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times negative 8k is 1 negative, which makes your answer negative, because it's an odd number of negatives in a multiplication or division problem. And then I have a negative 1 times 3k. Once again, there's only one negative. That makes that negative 3k. And then I have a negative 1 times a negative 25. That's two negatives in a, in a multiplication problem, which makes your answer positive. Now I combine my like terms. Remember, like terms have to have the same variable to the same exponent. So 14 is what we call a constant, like 25. They have no variable to no power, so we can add those together. They're on the same team. They're both positive, so we get 39. And then k's match k's. These two happen to have the same sign also, so you get negative 59k plus 39. We have a two-term algebraic expression. Can't do anything with it. Um, we don't know what k is. We don't know what it's equal to. So we're done as far as that goes. We've simplified it, and now it asks for the coefficient. Remember, the coefficient is the number that is multiplied by a variable. So my coefficient here is negative 59. 39 would be the constant. Can't solve it but negative 59 is the coefficient. Number three is a subtraction problem with negatives. I'm going to put a box over here because I like to get my negative answer right away, so I do leave change opposite. I realize they're on the same team, so I'm going to add and use that same sign, so I know my answer is negative. I can already estimate it. Estimate it. Four plus one is five, so it's either going to be five and something or six and something. So let me take their absolute values and add them together. So I'm using 4 and 3 fifths plus 1 and 3 fourths. Again, I have to have common denominator, so I need to go to 20. If you multiplied it by 4, then you better multiply it by 4 up here and get 12. If you multiplied it by 5, then you better multiply it by 5 and get 15. Now we're in common denominator, so we can add. I get 27 twentieths, and 4 plus 1 is 5. Now, it's a good answer, except there's something wrong with it. It's a little bit mixed and a little bit improper, so we need to simplify this 27 20 To review, that looks like this. 27 divided by 20 goes in once with 7 remainders. That's 1 and 7 20 The 1 combines with the 5, the other whole number, to become 6 and 7 20 And that's why I like to get my negative at the very beginning and have it in my answer, because by now I've been dealing with the absolute value, been dealing with positives, had to remember at the very end to go back up there and say, oh yeah, these both were negative. My answer is negative 6 and 7 twentieths. All right, number four says, if a 12-pack of Mountain Dew costs $3.72, how much should a 10-pack cost? And you've seen me do a lot of changing of things proportionally by grabbing them and, and either pinching them on a screen like this or taking them and and dragging diagonally by the corner. It's another way to grow or shrink something proportionally. Um, but you keep the same constant ratio, which that's the proportional part of that. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a proportion. Uh, I know that it's $3.72 for a 12-pack, but I really want to know for a 10-pack. Okay. So, of course, we can multiply and divide. If we multiply that and then divide, that will be shrinking it down proportionally to 10 instead of 12. Of course, another way to do this is to find a unit rate. You could take, oh, by the way, your answer is 
three dollars and ten cents. Obviously, you're gonna have to pay less for ten of those, but you could have taken at some point. You could have said, "Well, I just want to know what it is for one." So I take three point seven two divided by twelve. That's how you find a um, a unit rate is just to divide the one rate that you have. That gets you that each one costs thirty one cents. And then, of course, you want to buy ten of them, so take it times ten, and that's another way to get to your three dollars and ten cents. Number five is an algebraic equation, and I've done quite a few um, with with rainbow. Of course, you can set up the rainbow, but I'm going to go ahead and do this one as cancellation. So I go ahead and do leave change opposite. I would try to do the distributive properties if I could. I'd combine like terms. If I had variables on both sides of the equation, I'd subtract one set to get them all on one side, and that would then get me to what I have here, which is a two-step equation. So I need to remember that, that I'm not doing this problem. I'm undoing it. Somebody already took k, and they, first of all, multiplied it by negative 11. Then they added 3. So I'm going to start where they finished, and I'm going to subtract 3, but I have to do it to both sides. Cancel out here, which leaves us a negative 11k equals 7. If they multiplied by negative 11, I'm doing the opposite, because I'm undoing it. I divide by negative 11. Those cancel out, and you're left with k equals negative 7 elevenths. k equals negative 7 and 11. Negative 7 11. Number six is a percent problem. So right away, percent proportion. If Sam got 11 questions correct on his 18 question quiz, what was his percent correct? Notice that there's no is and of here to tell you part and whole, but you can say, well, what would it have taken to him to get 100%? Wouldn't he have had to get 18 correct? So there's your connection. 18 connect correct would have got him 100%, but he got an 11 correct. And so now all I have to do is take that 11 divided by 18, which I believe gets you 61.1 repeating percent, and I did not put to um, round that, so hopefully I put it on the uh, Google Form quiz, um, but you would have, be, would have been looking at 0.611111, or if you did the whole proportion by multiplying and dividing, then you would have got 61.1111, and of course, you look behind that, it rounds down, and you're left with 61%. Number seven says find the quotient of A and B, quotient meaning divide, so I really need to find out what A is, and divide it by B to get my answer, that's that word quotient is a, quotient, is a word that we should know. So, to get A and B, we talked about this earlier, these two are right across from each other, vertical angles. Vertical angles are always congruent, so B has to be 30 degrees. And A, A, well, if I remember that this green line right here, this green line right here is a straight angle. Well, a straight angle has a measure of 180 degrees, so now that I know that 30 plus A equals 180 degrees, of course, I would just solve that algebraically and say, well, I'm going to subtract 30 which gets me A equals 150. So now I'm taking 150 divided by 30, the quotient of A and B, which of course then equals 5. And finally, number 8. We have negatives and we have order of operation here, so I'm going to do leave change opposite. Um, and then I'm going to start looking for order of operation. So I try to do my grouping symbol. There's nothing to be done there and nothing to be done there. I scan for exponents. There are none. I go to multiplication and division. That's two negatives in that problem. Two negatives when I multiply them become a positive. So now I'm looking at negative 3 plus 20 plus negative 63. Most of my students have have chosen to get their teams together before they do battle. So they're going to get these two together. I have, I don't know why I wrote a 63. It's a 60. Now I get negative 63 they go to fight these positive 20, and who wins? The negatives win it by 43. Of course, what we were saying is they have different signs, so we subtract their absolute value and use the sign of the larger absolute value. So the negatives win it by 43, and that's your answer.